Hi everyone, I'm Dick Beardsley. Welcome to the fishing scene. <laughs> no, it's not October. It's the middle of the summertime, but you sure can't tell it by the weather out here. Folks, I'm telling you, major cold fronts. When you're fishing in Minnesota, the Dakotas, really anywhere in the upper Midwest, cold fronts come through on a regular basis. And we had a big one come through just this morning. Now, a lot of folks think, gosh, cold front comes through, forget it. The fish just aren't gonna be biting. Well, that can be true to a certain extent. Most of the time, what I've seen over the years is that the fish are affected by those cold fronts more like the second and third day than they are the day of or the day after. So don't let that keep you from going out on the water. What you gotta do is just make sure that you fish a little bit slower most of the time, and those bites might not always be real hard bites, might be real light bites, but don't give up on your fishing. What we're doing today, we're on the edge of a sunken island. I threw out a buoy to mark that edge, and we're just working a jig very, very slow along that break. In fact, speaking of a cold front fish, there's one right here. Good fish too, it, it feels like a walleye. Stand down like one. Hit it really light. Could hardly feel him. It's hanging down there like an eye. Oh yeah, there he comes, I see him, it's an eye. Oh yeah, I saw a nice eye too. Nice eye. Look at that beautiful white tip. I'm gonna just reach over the side here. And and grab that fish. Uh, hey folks, there's there's a nice cold front walleye right there, huh? Nice fish, about a 19, 20 inch walleye. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Hit that jig really, really light. We're gonna get that nice gal back in the water. Look at that nice fish. There you go, baby. There, oh man. The technique we're using, like I said, is nothing except pretty basic stuff. And when it comes right down to fishing, with all the high gear, high electronic gear out there and the technology that's out there, I've said this before and I'll say it again, keeping it simple is sometimes the easiest way to go. What we're using today is just a small quarter ounce jig. It's a wide gap jig, max gap from Lindy Little Joe. And then what we're doing is we're using shiner minnows. A lot of times you get into the summertime, people say, well, you gotta go to leeches or crawlers. And there's some days when leeches and crawlers work the best. Problem is, on many of the lakes in West Central and Northwest Minnesota is, a lot of the lakes where you're fishing walleyes have really a, a, a large abundance of perch, sunfish, and you throw a leech or a uh, crawler down there and they can just eat that darn thing up before the walleyes get to it. So I almost always fish with minnows. I have leeches and crawlers along, but I almost always fish with minnows, two reasons. One is that it eliminates, for the most part, those little small cracker size sunfish and perch. And secondly, if you keep some of those walleyes and you're cleaning them, almost all the time they're gonna, their tummies are gonna be filled with minnows. So why not go after what they're feeding on? Let's get, our, get us hooked up with another shiner minnow and see if we can't connect with another one here. We just hook it right through the mouth, out the back of the head. And you think, well, yeah, but Dick, that's gonna, that's gonna kill that minnow. Well, it'll flop around and wiggle around on there for a while, but that's the nice thing about fishing with a jig, is that you're the one that's in control. You can use dead minnows. It's not gonna really matter. As long as those minnows look pretty fresh, it's not really gonna matter at all because you're doing the movement. Now, when the fish are like this, what I like to do is they're a little bit spooky when you get cold front conditions in there. I like to kind of long line my jigging. Now, if I was fishing real deep water, I'd have to vertical jig, but we're in about 18 foot of water and I like to long line that jig. More of the fishing scene after this. More walleye action coming up. 
It's time now for our fishing scene tip of the week. Cold front conditions can mean tough fishing, and nine times out of ten, the way to success is to slow down your presentation. Look for those fish to be belly down to the bottom or up in the thickest weeds. Don't expect lots of fish, but with patience, you no doubt will boat a few. I'm letting line out here now so I can long line that jig. Now when I say long line the jig, I don't mean having you know 200 feet of line behind the boat because then you're just not gonna be able to feel that bite at all. Now sometimes people when they're long line and jigging like to go with a, a super line like a, say Berkeley's fire line because of uh, the sensitivity is so much better on it. And I will use a fire line once in a while but I uh, still like going with regular monofilament. We've got spooled on here today as Berkeley XL Trilene. It's uh, just uh, my favorite line, six pound test. Okay, I got plenty of line out there. And then we're just kind of jigging it and then using the boat. What I'm doing here, I'm using my electric motor to go back up into the wind. So I drag that jig a little bit, let it fall back. The boat actually is dragging the jig a little bit because I'm moving with the motor, letting it fall back. And a lot of times when that jig stops, that's when that fish is going to pick it up. And long line too, that jig is kind of plowing through the sand or the gravel or the mud down there and it's spur stirring up some sediment. And that also can be an attractant. It'll at least get those fish thinking to themselves, hmm, something is a little different over there. There's a fish right there. Well, it might be a walleye. It seems to be hanging down there a little bit. Hard to tell. I know it's a fish. I haven't seen him yet. Oh, it's a bass. Hey, there we go. How about that, folks? A little bonus bass here today. Not a, not a bad one either. Come here, buddy. I'll reach down here. And you never want to thumb a, a, a walleye or a northern pike, but a bass, it doesn't hurt. Eh, about a pound and a half bass. So look at that. Something uh, smacked it there. Bigger fish, probably. Hey folks, I want to show you something here. See her fins back here? How they're all really messed up. You know, they're all like chopped up a little bit. That's This is a female and she was down there. This is She's out in deeper water now, but she's still recovering. I'll get her back in the water. She's still recovering from uh, the spawn. And what they do is they get in those areas and they, they make a bed, almost like sunfish do. They get in there and they use their tail to clear out areas and then they keep fanning around those eggs to keep the sediment and all that kind of thing stuff uh, that's floating around in the water off of those eggs. So that's why her tail is kind of all kind of chewed up like that. She's kind of in the recovery phase, probably just coming out of spawning and uh, just starting to get back to the point where, you know, she's moved out to her deeper haunts. Now, like I said, we're fishing out here for walleyes off the, the sharp edge of a uh, sunken island. But that doesn't mean it's just going to hold walleyes. These sunken islands hold multi-species of fish like like walleyes, bass, northern pike. Uh, they'll even hold some pretty good schools of uh, crappies and, and bigger sunfish at different times of the year. And it's so important to have that marker buoy out there because if I didn't have that marker buoy out there on that edge and you get out here in the middle of the lake like this, it's really hard to tell where you're at, especially if you're fighting a fish and the wind's blowing like it's blowing today, it'll blow you off a spot so quick and it'll be really tough to get back on that particular spot. Get this baited up there. Now long line and jigging is, uh, it works okay when you got maybe a, a maximum of three people in the boat. But if you've got any more than three people in the boat, because with three, you can, one can go out one side, other person can go out the other and then the third person can go straight out the front of the boat because we're going we're back trolling here but if you get any more than that you almost then have to vertical jig otherwise you're going to end up getting all fouled up so just kind of remember that when you're heading out there on the water if you've got three people you can long line any more than three you almost have to go vertical
And a lot of times, you'll snap that jig or drag it, you won't feel anything, the jig will stop, you'll go back, and that's when that fish will grab onto that jig. And really pay attention to your, your graph, your locator, your flasher. If you see bait fish, if you see any arcs down there off the bottom, you know, get ready because a lot of times those arcs, they are fish. Not sure what kind, but they are fish. And many times I've been out on the water, seen an arc, pretty soon, 10 seconds later, as the boat passes over it, my jig gets to that way, bam. Oh, he got underneath the boat there on me a little bit. Sometimes they'll do that, folks. Yeah, it feels like an eye, he's thumping down there. They'll get underneath you, or they'll start swimming towards you, and it's, you think, oh, I don't have a fish on anymore. But I do, <laughs> it's there. Uh, yeah, there's a walleye. Yeah, not as big as that last one, but not bad. Nice fish. Yeah, nice fish. I'm just gonna kinda do the old Roland Martin bass, flip them in the boat here. Hey, there's a nice eye, huh? Boy, pretty fish, aren't they, folks? They are just such a beautiful, beautiful fish. Nice golden color to them. Nice, nice fish here. If we wanted to keep a few to eat, this would be a perfect size. See how they got the black splot there on their dorsal fin? Then on their tail, they've got the white tip on there. And it really shines in the water. Pretty, pretty fish. And, and they're toothy critters, too, let me tell you. Get that guy back in the water. There are more walleyes still to come. Don't go away. Our photo of the week this week is from Jake Zima of Wabin, Minnesota, with a big northern pike from Lake of the Woods. Our conditions today, we have a northwest wind. Oh, it's about anywhere from 10 to 20 miles per hour with some higher gusts northwesterly blowing in that cold front. Our water temperature is about 63, 64 degrees, which is about 8 to 9, 10 degrees below what it normally is this time of the year. Air temperature, believe it or not, mid 50s in the end of June, crazy. Water clarity, I would say medium clarity right now. The wind's kind of got things stirred up just a little bit. And we've got rain it's getting ready to move in to the area. There's a fish. Oh yeah, feels like an eye too. Not a real big one, but it's an eye, I think, the way he's hunkering down there. Staying down, there he comes, yep. Yeah, a little walleye. Get him in the boat here. Not all that little, I mean, he's, he's you know, fat. He's, he's been feeding, you can see his belly's kind of poking out there. This is a perfect kind of eating fish. Let's just measure him quick there. Yeah, 15 and a half inches, perfect eating size fish. We'll get him back in the water. All right. Hey folks, cold front conditions, and it's gonna be raining here pretty soon. Let's get uh, rigged back up and get out and try to get some more fish before the rain comes. Anytime you get a cold front that comes through the area, you can always expect a couple of things. When that cold front first comes through, you're usually gonna have cloudier conditions with that chance of showers, pretty much like we do today. That's why many times, as I said earlier in the show, that first day of a cold front really isn't that bad, but usually that second day or third day, if you get clear skies, calmer conditions, that's when fishing can really be a lot tougher. Just kind of like I said, long lining these jigs here and popping them and bringing them back and 
popping them like that with a fish on. Come here, buddy. There, another walleye. You can always see in those clear water that white tail. There he comes. Ah, that's a little guy there. Oh, sneak him up here. Boy, they're healthy fish, though, folks. Hey, this one's only about a 14-incher, but he's a fat one. Look at the belly on him. He's been eaten, no doubt about that. If we would have been cleaning this one here, I can about guarantee you he'd be full of, full of minnows. Yeah, 14-incher. Get him back in the water there. Hey, folks, as you can see, it's starting to rain now, and we've got a big bank of clouds off to our northwest that's moving in here. Again, as long as you got plenty of rain gear with you, warm clothing like we've got today, it's really not all that bad out here. There's a fish right there. He's swimming right towards the boat. This feels like a better fish. This feels like a better fish. Oh yeah, it's an eye. I can see his tail. Nice eye. Nice eye. Nice eye, all right. Come here, buddy. Get him over here by the boat. Oh. Hey, here we go, folks. Hey, cold front conditions. Don't let it scare you, especially that first day of a cold front, first day after a cold front. Hey, fishing can be pretty darn good like it's been today. Please remember to practice selective harvesting. By doing so, we'll continue to have great fishing for years to come. I'm Dick Beardsley. For my camera gal, Raina Benson, have a great day on the water.